This is Khao San Road, the famous backpacker strip in Bangkok. Anyone coming here in the next six months to indulge in ecstasy, ice or other illegal drugs should think twice. Although it's only just started, Thailand's police are prepped and ready for War on Drugs, the sequel. Tonight, they're out collecting urine samples to test for drugs. Strangely, they target just one of the many nightclubs in this area, and they test only Thais. Anyone from overseas is left out. It all seems a bit stage-managed to me, a PR exercise designed to show the police as a friendly, benevolent force and skirt around their terrible reputation. The police uh, in Thailand are, are probably one of the, the most corrupt cause, you know, in anywhere in the world. Despite these concerns, as Thailand launches its new anti-drugs campaign, it's the police who will once again be at the forefront of government policy. The last war, five years ago, was the real deal. In the first 15 days, over 500 people were killed. Death tallies were presented like sports results on TV bulletins, but the authorities ordered an end to that when the toll started rising too quickly for living room comfort. Many of the killings, many of uh, uh, murders, assassins, have been carried by the policemen. Uh, carried out by? Yeah, it's carried out by, by, by policemen as hired assassins. One month into the 2003 killing spree, Nong Fluke was the first child to die. Since his death, his grandmother talks to his spirit daily and is still fighting for justice. Nong Fluke's father was arrested in front of this market with 6,000 amphetamine pills in a police sting operation. His mother was waiting in the car. When she saw what happened, she took off. Witnesses say that police opened fire on the car as it drove away. Nong Fluke was asleep in the back and killed with two bullets to the chest. His mother managed to run into this market and hide under a table, but she was found, handcuffed and dragged away, never to be seen again. Uh, Nong Fluke's uncle says police admitted at the time that they accidentally killed the boy. But five years on, no one has been prosecuted. The the previous government set up a committee to investigate the thousands of killings in 2003. It ruled that over half of those killed had nothing to do with drugs. Few drug uh, dealers, big major dealers and producers were killed. Kraisak Chunhawan was a member of the committee. The former senator, now opposition MP, ridicules the official version of events that says rival gangsters killed each other. Many of those who were killed were first-time users, um, small, petty dealers, police informers, innocent people, um, 
inadvertently got in the way uh, uh, political activists, mm. uh, enemies of the local uh, <clears throat> um, powers. From the outset, the architect of the offensive was the policeman who became Prime Minister, Taksin Shinawat. He used strong language to demonise anyone using or selling drugs. A recently leaked document reveals how that language was translated into policy. This is an order from the Permanent Secretary from the Ministry of Interior. It says instructions here. Those who uh, uh, sell and produce drugs should be treated either uh, arrested and, and imprisoned, dies from extrajudiciary killing, or dies from other reasons. This is order to kill. It's not something the authorities now want to discuss. The National Police spokesman dismisses it as history, but I press him anyway for his views on the letter. When you ask me my opinion, mm. I, I think as a, it will be difficult for me to, to give you the, my opinion because this is the history. But even so, you, you, you speak Thai, what does it mean to you? Does that, mean, does that show to you that uh, police were given instructions or instructions to act very mm. firmly mm. against suspected uh, drug dealers, even to the point of killing them. I don't think in, in, in any of the document will indicate what you said. Because if, if it indicates like that, the people who issue the order my, my, my in jeopardy. But this, this is the thing. Uh, it, pr the former Prime Minister, Pres uh, Taksin, mm -hmm. was quoted in the, uh, in the foreign press mm -hmm. recently saying that whoever is responsible should be tried. Now, isn't mm -hmm. the person responsible the person who signs that letter? He sh shouldn't Mr. Sermsak uh, Pong Panit, Under Secretary of the mm -hmm. Ministry of Interior, mm -hmm. be brought to trial for <laughs> asking for the death of uh, I think some we, people? We should stop for a while. Let me clear to you no. some issue before we go on. No, no, please. What, 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 no. Did, uh, what, what's, why can't you explain to me? No. This is the history. This is the Interior Ministry which helped draw up the blacklists of users and dealers targeted by police in the last war. The current Interior Minister, Chalom Yubamrung, was not in office at the time. But as a former policeman, he strongly denies allegations of police misconduct and says no such behaviour will be tolerated in this new blitz. <laughs> Despite the leaked Interior Ministry letter, the new minister is holding to the official line that the deaths were almost entirely the result of gang warfare. With a new drug war about to start on the streets of Thailand, many fear another bloodbath. The language that this government used is very similar to the language used by Thaksin Shinawatra government in 2003, that is, this is a war and we need to get rid of enemy of the nation at all costs. Enemy of the, of the nation in this case means all the drug traffickers and blacklists are now being prepared again. According to Sunay Pasuk from Human Rights Watch, this new offensive could be even worse than the last. He says the Justice Minister has requested that blacklists include three generations of any suspect's family as well. Because this time it is not just the suspects themselves who can be subject to arrest or much more worse thing that could happen to them, including extrajudicial killings, but also extended members of their families could also be subject to the same fate, and that is very, very disturbing. 
that more killings are on the way is almost inevitable. The interior minister in charge of the new crackdown is not known for mincing his words. He's already given this chilling warning. This uh, new war on drugs that, it's a, that is about to start, are we to expect bodies lying in the streets the, like the last time, thousands of dead again? H how many people do you think this time will be, will be uh, eliminated? I, I, I don't think so. I don't think so. So are you expecting this time to, to catch more of the big time dealers because they seem to get away last time? We, we always, we always uh, look to the major criminal group, uh, international syndicate. I think that as a police officer, we, we have to do that. But at the same time, we, we are perhaps we have to catch the small time, mm. the pusher on the street. After the military-led coup against Prime Minister Thaksin, there were hopes that justice might be served for the victims of the first drug war. But with Thaksin's return five weeks ago and the election of a pro-Thaksin government once again, the prospects for justice are fading. In the case of Nong Fluke, police say they now have new evidence which proves a mysterious man on a motorbike did the shooting. It's a revelation the interior minister has clearly accepted as fact. And he doesn't put much stock in eyewitness accounts that police took Nong Fluke's mother away. What we have is clearly now, huh? clearly now is, is, is the, uh, uh, an attempt, very, very audacious and an apparent attempt huh? to uh, dismiss any of the cases uh, of, of uh, state officers using violence against the people illegally, you see? I want to Already there are fears that due process is being ignored. Although technically the new war has only just begun, Sunay Pasuk from Human Rights Watch is monitoring several cases in Thailand's north which suggest a familiar pattern is already emerging. Heavily armed officials, government officials in plain clothes were hunting down two men traveling on motorcycle who ended up dead with guns in their hand but there was no proof that they were trying to shoot the police. They were trying to resist the arrest attempt, but they ended up dead. And this footage was shown on TV during midday news and then evening news. This is a very disturbing reminiscence of 2003. Violent and powerful uh, leaders sometimes cannot be persecuted in their own country where they can exercise so much power that the judiciary system, the, the process of law, justice does not exist. Like, it does not exist in Thailand right now. We are heading toward another period 
in which government policy on drug suppression could lead to very serious human rights violations, uh, murdering of suspects without any proof of evidence, a complete destruction of due process of law and judiciary process in Thailand. This is another world completely different from Trevor Boshu inviting foreigners to come to Thailand. It is not a land of smile. It is a murderous country.